None of us will ever forget this day. Yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. For me, the question has already been answered. Should we be here? Yes. Stirring words from Jack Buck. Glad to have you with us on Sports Center along with Steve Berthium. I'm Reese Davis. The president urged us to return to work, and that is what baseball did. We will follow suit by bringing you news from the games that have become part of our culture. That's right. For the first time in a week, Monday, fans poured into six National League parks in the U.S. and Canada. But before they could get to the turnstile, security checks, even for the players. That's what the Mets' Jay Payton found out at PNC Park in Pittsburgh on Monday. The Riverwalk at PNC Park closed for security purposes. Getting in and out was not normally as easily as it usually is, and that's probably going to be the case in America everywhere you go these days. In Los Angeles, bomb-sniffing dogs patrolled Dodger Stadium hours before the game. Fans' bags inspected at the gates. No metal detectors were used anywhere on Monday. In Montreal, a high and invisible security presence at Olympic Stadium. Guards checking bags before fans could enter. No coolers or backpacks allowed anywhere on Monday. And in St. Louis, where we saw Jack Buck so movingly speak before the game, a way to enter Bush Stadium. Officers again collected donations to help the cause in New York City. And once those fans entered the stadium, many moving tributes in St. Louis, the city's firefighters and police departments on the field prior to game to honor their brethren in New York. Even the bases showed the stars and stripes. Emotion was evident everywhere you looked on the faces of the players, certainly of the firemen who were along to watch, thinking of people who gave their lives and fought so valiantly in New York City and in Washington. In Montreal, the Marlins and Expos displayed American pride, Charles Johnson holding the American flag, and in Philadelphia, the flag flying at half-staff. Phillies manager Larry Boa showing his emotion as the Phillies stand at attention, their hats over their hearts. In Pittsburgh, the Mets marched onto the field not wearing the traditional NY cap, but those paying tribute to those from New York and rescue police and fire departments. Players obviously moved by tragedy that happened in their backyard. In Denver, Kurt Schilling, who wrote such a moving letter to America, he called it, to the people who had given their lives to try to save others, had a message on his hat, and both teams held the American flag in the middle of Coors Field. Baseball back to work, but certainly the tragedy on its mind. The Mets were supposed to open a three-game series against the Pirates Monday in Queens, but Shea Stadium, in the shadow of Manhattan's now altered skyline, is a transition center for relief supplies. So the Mets many of whom spent the weekend at Shea helping to unload those supplies, were the only team Monday not where they were originally supposed to be, having moved their Shea series against the Pirates over to PNC Park in Pittsburgh. But the thoughts of the Mets players and coaches back in New York with that city's police, fire, and EMT workers demonstrating there. With the hats on the ball players, Brooklyn native John Franco, a wide range of emotion for him on Monday and on his 41st birthday. Fans in Pittsburgh Monday contributed about $100,000 in donations for the New York City Police and Fire Rescue Fund. But a shaky start for the players' top two. Todd Zeal to Todd Ritchie. Kevin Young gets the ball. Yeah, that's three outs. Here you go, Ed Rapuano. Here's the ball. Uh, hold on, Kevin. That's only two outs. 
Everybody's a little rusty. They've been off for a week. Top three, 2-2 two, two to Desi Relaford after a much-needed laugh. Richie's pitch just misses. Relaford thinks, okay, ball four. No, Desi, that's ball three. We said they were rusty. Bottom eight, 1-1. One, one. Franco on the mound, and he rings up Chad Hermanson. Franco worked a scoreless eighth. He's the Mets pitcher of record in relief of Al Leiter. Top nine, Ray Ordonez with two on. Past Aramis Ramirez. They wave Shiosi Shinjo. Brian Giles throws home. Jason Kendall can't hang on. And New York takes a 2-1 lead. Next up, it's pinch hitter Mark Johnson taking Mike Fetters to right. And this one's off the wall. Jay Payton scores. Ordonez comes in. Mets a three-run ninth. They take a 4-1 lead. So Franco will get the victory on his birthday if Armando Benitez can close. Bottom nine, he gets Kevin Young, then rings up Gary Matthews Jr. Benitez, his 39th save. See you later. Franco gets the win on his birthday. Mets win 4-1. Mets win for the 18th time in 23 games. A significant win for John Franco, whose family are firefighters. They are all okay, but his son's Little League coach is still missing in New York City. Franco turned 41 Monday. He's the fifth oldest pitcher since 1900 to win a game on his birthday. The oldest, Jack Quinn, who won on his 48th birthday in 1931, played for Brooklyn. Franco, again, is a Brooklyn native. John, you grew up in Brooklyn, winning pitcher on the first night back. How did it feel to be back out there? It felt fine. I know to, it's hard, but, you, you know, we have a job to do, and you, you got to try to concentrate the best you can. And fortunately for me, I was in the right right spot, right time. Uh, you know, Al Lida pitched a great game for us, kept us in the game. And it's good, you know, the guys came out, and uh, we did our best for three hours to not try to think about what's going on back home. But uh, uh, all in all, I'm sure we're still in, in the back of our minds, and we're still thinking about it. How'd you do it, not thinking about what was going on back home? I know you and I talked last week, and you said you weren't sure how you'd do once you got back on the field. How was it? Uh, it was kind of hard, but, you know, once you get out there, you just try to get your concentration level and trying to get them, them hitters out, and hopefully they hit it at somebody and you don't mess up. And uh, it was a good team effort tonight. Um, I'm just glad we won tonight because we need, we need to get the wins and keep winning, and hopefully, you know, we still have an outside shot to, to do something. Was today as big a win for the city of New York as it was for the pennant race? I think so. I think we all wanted to win, and hopefully we could continue went in for the city and you know, make make them proud of us like we are proud of them the way with the way they've come together right now john franco and the mets win game one in pittsburgh of a series that was supposed to be played at shea bob thank you security will take on a whole new role in our social consciousness and baseball is no different we'll have more on the security measures at the mets game in pittsburgh that coming up a bit later here on sports center Diamondbacks and the Rockies, the American flag displayed proudly by the players at Coors Field. Bob Brenly, Buddy Bell side by side. Kurt Schilling in his letter urged fans to watch for messages scrawled on players' caps. He sent one there, reading God Bless America. Top of the first, Luis Gonzalez facing Denny Nagel. And Gonzalez brings up on the inside pitch. Top three, Diamondbacks leading 1-0. Gonzalez again having some trouble with Nagel. Luis, one for four, struck out a couple of times and walked. Top seven D-backs trailing 3-2. Damian Miller against Kane Davis with a runner on. And Miller, the two-run shot, is 13th. The Diamondbacks take a 4-3 lead. Bottom seven, Larry Walker against Randy Johnson. And you know from the All-Star Games pass that Larry hates facing Johnson. He stands in there and gets plunked in the back of his right arm. He would leave the game. He's a National League's leading hitter. He left the ball, or left the ball game after being hit there. Steve Finley up against Jose Jimenez. Scorches one into the corner. Couple runs with score. Finley two for three. Drove in four on the ninth. Couple of doubles. He's got 26 doubles on the season. Diamondbacks win the game. You saw earlier Larry Boa choked up during the pregame ceremony as so many people were across baseball. Andrew Jones watching a slider there. Robert Person gets him. Scott Rowland was watching and hitting off of Greg Maddox. Rowland's 21st of the year ties the game at one. Chipper had gone yard earlier. Top five Braves down 2-1. Andrew Jones chasing one down in the dirt. Strikes out for the second time. They'd have to throw him out the hard way. Bottom six, game tied at two, and rolling off Maddox again. He's only the fifth man to take Maddox deep twice in one game. Second home run put the Phils up 3-2. And encouraged by Larry Boa, with whom he's feuded, Rowan came out to take the curtain call. Patriotic spirit evident in the Philly fans. Person in the seventh still in control and still owning Jones. That's the hat trick for Andrew on the night. Bottom eight, Steve Carse dealing for the Braves. The bunt from Jimmy Rollins, and Carse throws it into right field. Brian Hunter's going to go to third. Rollins going to go to second on the throwing error. It's the Braves are throwing it all around the yard at this point. Sack fly made it 4-2. Roland looking for his third home run of the game. Julio Franco tries to start a little 
three, six, one double play. Didn't work out that way. Rollins safe. Rollins scores. It's 5-2 Phillies. Top nine, Mesa and against Andrew Jones. Andrew's been struggling to pop out of it a little bit before the delay. He struck out four times on the night, and then Keith Lockhart as Larry Bulla puts on, strikes out, and the Fanatics celebrates a 5-2 Philadelphia win. Person win eight, gave up just the two runs. He's 6-0 in his last seven starts, 12-2 at the bet this year, and 24-5 and lifetime at the old stadium. Phillies beat the Braves for the 1,000th time in club history, not this season or else. They'd be way ahead of everybody else instead of two and a half back. It was an emotional night for all, particularly Philly skipper Larry Boa, who joined Sal Palantonio. Larry, it was obviously a very emotional night for the team and especially for you. Describe what was going through your mind early on when the ceremonies began at Veterans Stadium tonight. Well, I, I just had a bunch of things running through my mind. Uh, the people in New York and Washington, uh, the country as a whole, you know, how proud you are to be an American. And what they did to us is, is uncalled for. And, I don't know, I just, I, my emotions got carried away there. I just couldn't, I couldn't turn anything off. I know I didn't want everybody to see me, but, uh, and I was very hurt by what happened to our country. And uh, I know we'll take care of business here, so. Was it good for your ball club to get out on the field? And obviously good to see Scott Rowland just uncork two home runs like that. Yeah, I, I'm very proud of the way we played. Uh, you know, as a manager, your coaching staff, you push, 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 you know, you try to get the best out of them. But tonight I just, I took a step back and said, hey, every guy's going to be different. Every guy has different emotions. Everybody heals different ways. Um, the, the mental part of the game is going to be different for 25 guys. But I can't, I, I'm really pleased the way we played. Uh, even if we'd have lost the game, I was just happy the way we played. We played like professionals. We played hard. And we didn't leave anything out there. Robert Person said before the game that it was his most important start of his life. Do you think that every player felt like that? I think this, this game meant a lot to the country as opposed to the Phillies or the Braves or Veterans Stadium. Um, we're starting a healing process that it'll never be healed. You know, this, the, these scars will go with us till, till we die. Uh, I thought the Kennedy assassination was the worst thing I've ever seen, but this is, this is, far worse than, than what happened with JFK and uh, you know we we had to let those cowards know that they might have knocked us down but they didn't knock us out and we went down to one knee but we, we pulled ourselves up and and we're headed back thanks a lot Larry okay, you're welcome back to the studio Sal Larry thank you a guy known for his toughness for a combative nature showing a soft side that there's a large flag unfurled on the field before the game Tony Gwynn participating in the ceremony. Dodger catcher Paul LaDuca, Brooklyn, New York native. Top of the fourth, no score. Kevin Brown dealing to Ray Langford, and Langford takes him out. His 19th, 1 0 Padres. Brown's ERA under one, five outings against San Diego this year. This is in the seventh. Channel Park on in relief for the first time in four years. Phil Nevin with the bases juice knocks in Ricky and D'Angelo Jimenez. Makes it 3-1 San Diego Park. Later left the game with a strained left Achilles. The team calling him day-to-day. -day. Bottom of the eighth now, 6-3 Padres. Adrian Beltre hit him with a couple of guys on. Paducah would come in to score. It's now a 6-4 ball game. Later in the inning, Jose Nunez on in relief. Chad Kruder standing in there. Trying to get the Dodgers back even or at least a little closer. And he can do nothing with Nunez's breaking ball. Dodgers fall to the Padres by a count of 6-4. to four. Trevor Hoffman picking up his 37th save in 40 tries. Ricky Henderson now with 2,238 career runs. He's now seven shy of tying Ty Cobb's all-time record, and he is 14 hits away. See, it was an emotional day in St. Louis. Police officers and firefighters paying their respects, and an eloquent and emotional Jack Buck, part of a moving pregame ceremony at Bush Stadium. Bud Smith, Cardinal rookie, Coming off his no-hitter, top two rings up Jeremy Burnett. He went seven, allowed only three hits, all singles, struck out five. Top five, Ruben Cavedo. The single to right, J.D. Drew throwing home, and he nails Jose Hernandez. Nice tag by Eli Marrero. Brew crew still lead, though, one nothing. Bottom six, it's J.D. Drew. This one is down the right field line. Placido Polanco, they're going to wave him in. And the Cardinals come back to tie it at one in the sixth. Next batter, Albert Pujols. 
He comes up with a base hit to center. His 112th RBI, tying Ray Jablonski's rookie team record. Drew scores the go-ahead run, and that was the final 2-1 Cardinals win. They have won 7 of 8. Bud Smith extended his hitless streak to 11 innings, meaning none of the last 32 pitchers to throw complete game no-hitters. Game series with the Expos, scheduled to begin Thursday, from what would be a virtually vacant Olympic Stadium to a normally packed Coors Field, then donate much of the proceeds to victims of last week's attacks. The Expos, however, rejected McMorris's plan, saying instead they would contribute money for the victims, but not necessarily from ticket revenue. Good thing. Announced attendance for Monday's visit from Florida, 3,013. Maybe one-third of that actually in the ballpark for the game between the Marlins and the Expos. Charles Johnson and Expos bullpen coach Pierre also now holding American and Canadian flags. Canadian Mounties leading a procession of police and rescue service personnel. Flags side by side at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Bottom five, Javier Vasquez batting. Ryan Dempster hit hits him right in the head. Vasquez, Vasquez would get up, had to be taken to the hospital for x-rays. Dempster obviously concerned. Top six, Marlins down 6-5 at this point. Luis Castillo, he goes to the gap in right center. CJ comes in. Alex Gonzalez will score. Castillo with a triple Dempster charge with six runs on eight hits and four and a third. Marlins an eight-run six. They win 10-6. Smallest crowd of the season at Olympic Stadium.